Optimal health for high performers. This is the Health Upgrade Podcast with Dr. Nawaz Habib. Welcome back to the Health Upgrade Podcast. Today we have the opportunity to speak with Dr. Michael Kennedy. So Dr. Michael Kennedy earned his Doctor of Chiropractic degree from Northwestern Health Sciences University. And after graduating from chiropractic school, he went on to treat his own health conditions using applied kinesiology, nutrition response testing, and functional neurology, chiropractic neurology. He and his wife have four young children, and he practices chiropractic neurology and chiropractic care for his patients in Chanhassen, Minnesota, just outside of Minneapolis. Dr. Kennedy has included vagus nerve stimulation in his practice, and we're really excited to hear about the results that he's been seeing with vagus nerve stimulation being used for his patients. Without further ado, welcome Dr. Michael Kennedy. Dr. Kennedy, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. So we're excited to kind of dig into your experience with the vagus nerve stimulation devices in your practice. Let's dig into your practice a little bit. You are a chiropractic neurologist. Tell me a little bit about what brought you into Cairo and into the chiropractic neurology world. Okay. So, you know, originally got into chiropractic just to help people. When I was in undergrad, I hurt my arm, hurt my arm really bad. And I decided to say, hey, let's check out this chiropractic thing because I was interested in becoming a chiropractor. And the chiropractor that I saw, she fixed my shoulder in one visit, which was awesome. And she also showed me that I had a dairy allergy. And at that time, I had like 30, 40 different warts on my hands, been frozen off multiple times, but they kept coming back. But after she adjusted me, gave me some supplements and told me to get off dairy, all those warts went away. So I was like, I'm hooked. I'm going to be a chiropractor. So fast forward about 10, 15 years, one of my daughter was born at about three years of age. She started having this nervous tick. She'd like bend her head forward and flap her hands. I'm like, what the heck is all this about? So that made me want to get interested in chiropractic neurology. So, you know, fast forward a little bit farther, I had a couple of concussions back in high school. And when my fourth kid was born, it was way too much stress. So then I started getting really, really dizzy. Like every time I looked out the window, I'd get dizzy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't be a chiropractor. I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this. Luckily, I saw a chiropractor in Minnesota, chiropractic neurologist trained. And after like two weeks of seeing him, my dizziness was completely gone. And a whole bunch of other crazy symptoms that I had just disappeared that was never fixed by regular chiropractic. So I was like, I'm going to get into chiropractic neurology because this stuff is just fantastic. So now after, you know, getting trained through the Care Institute, there's a lot of cool things I was able to help with people, but I always hit like a certain plateau with a lot of patients. And I was like, well, you know, let's try doing this Vegas nerve stimulation that a lot of people have been talking about. And a lot of the patients that were like really hard to work on or with like plateaued, all of a sudden they started getting these really awesome results. So I was like, hey, let's dig more into this. That sounds like a really interesting story, especially your personal story, because a lot of us, myself included, got into kind of Cairo, got into functional, got into the Cairo neuro space based on our own experiences. We had our own health challenges. We had our own issues that were resolved or solved by the support of a chiropractor or chiropractic neurologist or functional medicine practitioner. And that's what led us to say, I need to share this with the world. So thank you for sharing that with us and for being upfront about that. Yes, it's a parallel to the experience that I had with, you know, when you say you just saw how cool it was when something that treated you that was so unexpected happened. And that's sort of what got me into it was when I was working with that functional neurosurgeon in New York City who was doing treatment of Parkinson's and essential tremor with deep brain stimulation. And I saw patients who were literally shaking like a leaf because they had, you know, advanced Parkinsonism. And all of a sudden they just stopped shaking because they found exactly the right spot in the brain to stimulate. And, you know, I just said, that's like magic. I got to be involved in that because if anything can do that, I want to figure out ways to take that technology further and advance it. So a very parallel experience. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your introduction to vagus nerve stimulation. You mentioned it was during a course at the Carrick Institute. 
and that it was something that was intriguing to other practitioners. And you started to say, let me look into this a little bit because it does help busting through some plateaus. So let's get into some of the initial cases and the first time you started to use it. Sure, sure. So like with the Keurig Institute, they've made it easier. They have like these intro course called Receptor-Based Essentials and Essential Pain Class. And we kind of briefly talk about like the vagus nerve and how to stimulate and stuff because there's ways where you can like deep breathe or stick your face in cold water and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, most patients aren't going to do it because like I'm not going to sit there, fill up a bucket of water and stick my face in it multiple times a day, (laughs) even though it does help. I mean, there's one guy in the class that his heart rate was resting heart rate was 120 and he did it every day and it went down to 80 after like two months. But let's face it, most patients aren't going to do that. I mean, he was kind of a hardcore kind of guy. And then there's like, they have this other class where it's like Simnats series where different people give different presentations. And one guy was really talking about the vagus nerves and how they were making all these cool changes. So I was like, I contacted the Care Institute and they were like, hey, there's this new device that people are using that helps stimulate the vagus nerve. I was like, sweet, let's try it. Because like I, you know, I wanted to get the results like they were talking about in, in their podcast. So I got in my office and I was like, well, I don't know. I'm just going to just start using this on everybody and see what happens. And for a, one really cool example is this guy named Richard. He comes to see me from Mount Sound. He comes in for about a month, once a year. And he's this guy that always needs a lot of supplements and he needs a lot of care. But he also runs this shop in Barbados where he's constantly under stress. He's working like 18 hour days and he's like, I can't sleep. And I got all these health issues. So I was like, all right, well, let's try this. While you're here, let's use this Vegas stimulator on you and let's see what happens. And it's like a, just kind of a baseline. We took an HRV and this HRV graphs on a thing where people's health is. So if you're down to the right, it's someone that's not doing so good. If you're up on the up top left, you're someone's doing awesome. And so this, when I did it, he was down towards the, the right corner. We stemmed him, waited like 15 minutes, did again, used the stem on again, waited about 45 minutes. Cause I didn't really know how, how much to do. And then I waited another like 15 minutes and did it again. We redid the HRV and the diamond move over like two and up one. And that's usually something that would take three or four months of care of adjustments and supplements. So I was like, Hey, what the heck? Let's do it again. So we had stemmed him, waited another 15 minutes, stemmed him again, and he moved up and over again to like right in the middle where a healthy person should be. So he was able to bring like his heart rate, his picture of health up and over in a matter of two hours when normally that would have taken like three months. And since then, he went back to Barbados, I checked into him, and he's like the happiest he's ever been. He's getting work done and way less pain than he normally has. Usually he's like, oh, my back doc, I wish you lived here. But now he's like, he's doing way better, which is really cool. That's really awesome to hear. I'm sure you've got a bunch of stories like that, but just being able to dig through an interesting case like that, where electrical vagus nerve stimulation within a couple minute treatment done multiple times on the same day had the same effect that practices that we should be doing, foundational health-based practices that most patients are kind of averse to doing over a long period of time consistently had the same effect that it would over kind of three to four months, which is really phenomenal to see. Yeah, Um, which is really cool. I'm reminded of that, the story about when the IBM supercomputer finally beat Kasparov chess, you know, and everybody thought, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world. And, you know, Kasparov had a really cool attitude about it. His attitude was, you know, I bet together humans and computers working together could be better than either of them alone. And so I guess that's a crazy segue to asking the question, do you find that patients for whom your chiropractic adjustments last for, you know, hours or only days are now finding in combination with using a vagus nerve stimulator that the benefits of your adjustment actually are amplified in that that's not only easier to do, but they're more effective and that they last for a longer period of time. Because it sounds like for this patient in Barbados, you know, you don't have to be there every week, which you can't be obviously, right. but you right. can't, you're not there every week to help them. But now you don't need to be because the effects when you do get to see him last for so much longer. Yeah, for sure. When I noticed the difference with him, I said, all right, let's do him everyone before we do an adjustment. And every single time, almost every time I'd say, 
people just relax more. So their neck was a little bit more subtle or a little softer. So we got better, deeper adjustments. It was kind of like, you know, if someone was able to go get a massage right before you do an adjustment every time, you know, better adjustments that last longer. Excellent. So there is a great synergy between chiropractic oh, adjustment sure. and using the device because together they have the ability to enhance the experience. Correct. Yes. Excellent. Are there any particular types of patients, specific types of cases that you look to utilize vagus nerve stimulation with? Anything that you find in the history that it tends to work really well with? Yes. First of all, everyone's like really anxious nowadays, mostly, right? If anyone has anxiety, that's the first thing to look at. I'm like, hey, let's do an HRV. And the HRV that I have has does the heart rate when someone's laying down and when they're stand, standing up. And, you know, most people's heart rate should only change for about eight beats per minute. So it's laying down and standing up. I've noticed a lot of patients with anxiety will be, go up 20, 30, 40, 50 points just from laying down and standing up. And, you know, chiropractic is fantastic, but I'm not going to change someone's heart rate like that much with just an adjustment, right? So I find that if someone's heart rate bumps up that much, they are getting big stimulation for sure. And on top of also other supplements and you know, meditation stuff, but for sure, that's going to be a given. The other thing that I've noticed is headaches, headaches and migraines. You know, I've had patients that have had headaches and migraines if they get adjustments, but then they can come back. But I've found with doing vagal stimulation, those headaches and migraines go away faster. A lot of times they actually stay away, which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Who wouldn't want to have a reduced level of symptom and headache pain kind of longer term, right? Yeah. So I'll give you a quick story. So this patient, she started out with me maybe 14 years ago in practice, constant headache, eight out of 10. You know, most patients, you know, don't put up with that adjuster. It goes down to like two or three, but then, you know, it'll come back. Over the years, she started developing a little bit of thyroid issue. And whenever she would go up to the cabin with her family, it was like a two hour drive, three hour drive. She'd get constant like diarrhea straight through so she couldn't like go to the cabin without stopping so we did supplements she'd sell her medical doctor she did acupuncture she did massage therapy nothing changed so she even saw another chiropractor she's like you made me worse so i'm not for cheating on you again so they started like hey let's do a little bit of this i got this new vegas stimulation device in my office i'm like here let's do it so at that day she came in her pain was an eight out of ten okay stim Waited two minutes, I went to six out of 10, boom, stem again, three out of 10, boom, fourth time, totally gone, a matter of five minutes. She was like, oh my God, what did you do? So I was like, okay, well, you can, you know, burn one of these units for me. And she's like, all right, I'll do it. She just got it right then. And follow up, she came back a month later. She's like, I don't know what's happening, but I feel completely great. I don't have any headaches and all my digestion is completely normal. It's fantastic. The other cool thing about it too is her husband has been a patient forever too. He's had this chronic right shoulder pain. So he started, I was like, just use this, just use it, use your wife's thing. So he starts using it, using it, boom, boom, boom. And after like three weeks, he's like, my shoulder pain is completely gone. This is fantastic. I'm like, awesome. And then he kind of forgot to use it for a month. He's like, I don't know what happened. My shoulder pain's back again. It's like, dude, just use the stem at home. That was more like two weeks later. Oh, my shoulder is completely gone. Shoulder pain is completely gone. So it's like absolutely like magic when that works. It's like, this is so cool. And the, the funniest part too is the late the wife was like, I don't know if I want to renew this thing. The husband's like, Nope, you absolutely you have to have this because he's knows such a huge difference from her like digestive and his moods. That's just something for her that she just it's been a life changer and for him too as well, right? So it's really cool. That's great. <laughs> it's a marriage counseling and a small device, <laughs> device. That's really funny. Have you seen anything with any skin reactions? And the reason I ask is I actually had the opportunity to speak with another healthcare provider who her husband has psoriasis and Mm -hmm. she's been working with him for, you know, it's her husband. She's been working with him for, you know, a decade trying to manage his psoriasis better. She doesn't want to put him on an antibody. She doesn't want to, you know, put him on permanent steroids or a JAX inhibitor or one of those things. And she's been trying to do it naturally and she has not been successful. She got a hold of one of the vagus nerve stimulators that's out there and began using it on him. And she sent me pictures before and after pictures that were less than, you know, three or four days in between. And you can just see the white plaques on his skin and 
the redness around the raised bumps and the scarring in the before picture. And I mean, literally, it looks like a different leg. I mean, he picks it up and, you know, you see in the next picture, there's no white plaques that went away. She said within 24 hours and there's still bumps and there's still, you know, there's still wounds because it's only three or four days. They haven't healed yet, but you can see that they've scabbed over and there's no redness in the skin. I mean, it literally looked like in one case, it looked like somebody had just burned his leg and the other one, it looked, you know, just totally normal colored. Yeah. Have you seen anything like that? Yes. And I wish I took pictures because like this lady came in, she had neuropathy in her foot and she was like, yeah, my foot's kind of miscolored. I'm like, all right, take your sock off. Let's take a look. Her toes were literally purple and her foot was swollen. And I was like, oh, okay. That's a little bit more than I was expecting. But, you know, I pushed on her foot. It's red. You got pitting edema that lasted about a count of three. The pitting edema stayed in there. And then I touched each of her toes, you know, to kind of see if they'd blanch and how long that blanching would last. And her pinky toe lasted approximately seven seconds and the big toe lasted six. And the normal is like two to three seconds. So I'm like, oh, okay. So we did vagal nerve stimulation and I did a barbecue roll with her and some activator adjustments because she had an aneurysm in her brainstem 10 years prior. I'm like, okay, well, here's the stim machine go take it and do it at home. She comes back a week later just because she couldn't come back any sooner. Her pitting edema completely gone. Her foot went from that dark red to like a nice pink. And her toe refill went from a, a second or a six second refill to a four second refill. And then I was able to adjust her two more times and we did more vagal nerve stimulation. And then the refill went to two seconds each on each toe. In a matter of and well, two weeks. And then she's like, I wish I would have taken a picture because my foot looks the best it's ever looked in 10 years. I'm like, of course. You know, there's times where like, oh, I'm going to fix this person. We do a picture and nothing happens. And the ones that I don't take a picture of is like a complete like miracle. I'm like, oh, so it was amazing. Like it looked like her toes should, were going to be lost and now it was like totally fine. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy, crazy. Not- yeah, this is a crazy question, but have you seen anybody with either hypertension or pre-diabetes or even a person with advanced diabetes with foot wounds where they come to you and maybe not even expecting to see those results, they're seeing results? I mean, I realize it's kind of an out there question and maybe you don't have those experiences, but if you do, it'd be great to hear. No, not yet. I mean, I've only had the device in my office for about three months. I do have a patient that does have diabetes and some of the neuropathy and her feet are getting better and her sleep has improved. I mean, she was taking a bunch of CBD oil and all the sleep aids and now she doesn't need to. So that's pretty cool. But I haven't noticed anything about blood sugar. I'll have to ask her. You know what? Actually, I take that back now. I take that back. So I got another patient. He had a stroke about three years ago, came to see me for knee pain. That's the only thing I wanted help with, but that's kind of a weird thing. So we had, after two, three years ago, so we did laser therapy and we did adjustments and a couple of nutrition. I got down to a point where he could drive sometimes, but he'd have like really good days and bad days. And some of those days he would just be really, really crabby. And his wife was like, I don't know if I can live with this man anymore. And she's like concerned that he was going to die fairly soon. So then we started doing the vagal stimulation on him. And like, sometimes he'd come in, he was a little crabby. But now every time he comes in, he's super duper happy. And his wife is like, he's like a whole new man. I can't believe this. This is like the best thing he's ever done in like 20 years of all the stuff they've done. And he's been also struggling with blood sugar problems where it'd go from, he was in about the 140 range to 150 range. And now after doing the stimulation for three months, his blood sugar ranges about 120 to 125, which is really cool. The other thing is he has that chronic Lyme, so he's got like these big patches on his face and his upper head, and those are still there, but they have decreased in size, hmm. which is really cool. So, I mean, this guy has had two strokes and two heart attacks and he's still kicking. So, and yesterday when he was in, he drove in by himself. Like he hasn't been able to drive by himself in three or four years, so, which is wow. really cool. So over the three or four years that you've seen him, you said that prior to using the vagus nerve stimulator, there was improvement. He could drive sometimes. Yes. Right. Would you say that, you know, of the improvement that he's gotten over the three years you've seen him, how much of it 
did he gain prior to using the vagus nerve stimulator versus after? It was like 50 50. I would say, yeah, about 50. Because, like, for a while, he didn't want to come in because he's like, I don't see any difference. But then his wife made him, you have to come in. So, but I'd say, like, over like three and a half years, gotten about 50%. And then over the last three months of vagus stimulations, improved on 50%. Wow. which is huge i mean like huge and like his wife told me yesterday she thought he was gonna die like four months ago so wow. Wow. and now she's like yeah he's probably got a couple more years left in him which is really nice and she's happy about it she's happy about it. she's always yeah they've been together a long time so good wonderful stories yeah yeah have you seen anything with you know you talked about the fact that when patients demonstrate or to you appear to be anxious or have problems with stress management, that they're more likely to have some of the heart rate variability issues yeah. that you measure, and they're more likely to have some issues with heart rate changes from supine to standing. Have you seen anything with depression or with other aspects of mood? Obviously, you're telling me these patients, because their symptoms have been relieved, their moods are better, but have you seen any patients where they didn't really have terrible symptoms, but they had depression or they had other, you know, mood problems or even cognitive problems that are coming back around as a result? Yeah. Another patient that she started, she's been a patient for years again. We did a bunch of the supplements and detoxes and she never really progressed. One thing that helped her, she did get a divorce. And her depression improved. But before the divorce, it was like a 7 out of 10. After divorce, it was like a 4 out of 10, kind of just kind of maintained. Then we did some vagal stimulation that's gone down from like a 4 to like a 2 or almost a 1. So big improvement. That's been over the course of about two months. So one of the reasons that we've talked about on the podcast on other episodes that may explain why that's happening is associated with the neurotransmitter changes that happen as a result of vagus nerve stimulation and the changes in inflammation levels. So if you're sort of chronically depressed because mm -hmm. you have a bad marriage, as she obviously was, where yeah. it's just making her depressed, depression breeds more depression because depression itself is inflammatory. And when you're inflamed it disrupts your brain's ability to produce serotonin. It disrupts its ability to maintain serotonin in the synaptic cleft. It disrupts neurotransmitter balance across the board, serotonin being a big one. So mm. when you come out of depression, or let's just say you change the circumstances you're in the way she did with the divorce, yes, there's a reduction in the chronic ongoing trigger for that depression, but it doesn't really heal the underlying inflammation or inflammatory posture of the immune cells that are in your brain. So they're still doing that. They're still maintaining that problem with serotonin. One of the things that vagus nerve stimulation does is it forces those microglial cells, those brain immune cells back into the state where they're not disrupting serotonin production anymore. So it carries you the rest of the way back. You've gotten rid of the trigger, so it's not really acutely terrible, but you still have the depression because you lived like that for so long. And then vagus nerve stimulation helps you move back into that state where, hey, I can have sort of a normal positive mood. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm happy for her. That sounds like a great story. Yeah. Another cool story is that, you know, that guy with the stroke that I talked about earlier, his wife also started using it at home and she just like, hey, you know, all this stuff that I didn't do before, I'm motivated to do it now. Like she wasn't cleaning as much as she wanted. She hadn't sewed in a long time. Like sewing for her was a big deal. And she got to the projects that she hadn't done before in a really long time. So like increased motivation and increased happiness with her, even though she wasn't depressed, but her mood got better in order for her to get the things that she wanted to get done in life, which is really cool too. That is really cool. That's really yeah. great. And that's, we've talked about that before, about energy, how it increases mm -hmm. energy levels, because of course, energy is, you know, produced in your cells by mitochondria and mitochondrial dysfunction and disruption of oxidative phosphorylation. All those things sort of happen as a result of inflammation and depression and that, that yeah. increase in immune activity. And by controlling that with vagus nerve stimulation, it really has that sort of benefit across really everything in your body because every cell has mitochondria. 
Yeah. Uh, kind of cool story about me too is like a couple, I don't know, maybe a month ago, I didn't know if it was either COVID or flu, but I was having a really bad cough in the middle of it. I was like coughing so hard. I was like, damn, do I need to go to the hospital because it's so bad? And then I was like, all right, let's stimulate my vagus nerve and see what happens. And it would, it still had a cough, but it was way more controlled because before it was like, <clears throat> I couldn't stop. And with the, after I stimulated, like, oh, my cough got better. This is awesome. Yeah. So this is not an uncommon cool. occurrence. And we're actually seeing more and more of that particular change in many different cases all over the place. And it does have to do with the ability to reduce the inflammatory reaction within the lungs, right? And we know that the electrical vagus nerve stim device for cervical trunk has been granted authorization to support with asthma and does have an EUA for COVID breathing issues as well. And it has everything to do with the fact that it's sending that acetylcholine via the vagus nerve to the inflammatory cells in the lungs, calming them down, putting them into that parasympathetic homeostatic state, and essentially allowing the airways to open back up, allowing you to breathe more effectively. It's a really yeah. wonderful change, but that mechanism makes a lot of sense. You know, it's funny because there's actually a very interesting parallel between atopic dermatitis and eczema with asthma. And they really have two components to them. You have the component that is the, what I'll call sort of the twitchiness, the airway twitchiness that causes that bronchospasm, that uncontrollable cough. And the same way with eczema, you have the itch, the itchy component to it. Then on the other side of it, you have the inflammatory piece, which is the redness, the hives, or the rash. And in asthma, you have the swelling and the edema and the tissue changes that happen in the lungs. In each case, you have the inflammatory piece and the perception piece. The inflammatory piece is the redness of the skin and the rash. And then the itchiness is sort of your brain's component of it. And the interesting thing is that while vagus nerve stimulation appears to be able to have an effect on both arms, one is almost immediate. The reduction in the itchiness, not necessarily the rash, but you know, just for example, this case of this person with psoriasis that I was telling you about, the response against the itchiness happened almost immediately. I'm interested to hear when you use the vagus nerve stimulation, you found that you still had the cough right after stimulating, but you didn't have that uncontrollable, almost bronchospasm-like response. I'm assuming that the cough overall got better over time, much the same way the redness gets better over time, but there was an immediate response. Is that sort of what you're describing? In your yeah. Opinion? Yeah. So like if you were going to rate the cough out of zero to 10, it was like a nine, nine and a half when I was spasming. And after using the stimulation, it was probably like a six. And I did it again, it was like a four. So that was like within like two minutes. So it was like, oh my God, this is so awesome. That's great. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned something early on in our chat today that this is something that you use to help bust through some plateaus. And that's something that I share with a lot of people that this is a tool that I use when we hit a plateau. I love the fact that your practice revolves around a bit of a holistic response using nutrition, using supplementation, using chiropractic care and neurology in your practice. But you do hit some plateaus with patients and that's going to be across the board. You mentioned VNS as a tool for getting through some of those plateaus. Talk a little bit about a case where you noticed that this was really the game changer to get through that plateau. Yeah, well, it's recently, another case that I had where this guy, his husband and wife had a baby with extreme, like, extreme issues where she has seizures and wakes up in the night and they have to call the ambulance in the middle of the night multiple times. And so they're like just extreme, extreme anxious all the time, you know, high alert for the last four years. When I did HRV on him, his heart rate went from 64 to 137, which is, <laughs> that's nuts. That was even after I had adjusted him. So who knows what it would have been before. It might have been even higher. So I did two stims on him. And after that, it went from, 65 to an 85. Wow. So it still jumped up 20. You know, it went from, you know, from that instead of 137. And so that just allowed him to be able to relax at home, deal with his kid, and just kind of be able to 
heal way faster than it would have been taken. Like, you know, if it would have just adjusted him, there's no way he would have gotten better. But with that, he's able to make huge gains without even thinking about it. So That's phenomenal. How about yeah. his wife? It sounds like she's probably also existing in that same hyper oh, yeah. sympathetic overdrive state. Is she following suit with following her <laughs> husband's lead on this one? Yeah, her heart rate wasn't just hers wasn't as high. It went from like sixty five to like uh, hundred and ten. So it wasn't as extreme, but it's pretty <laughs> extreme, extreme. extreme double. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, both uh, yeah. They're doing some Vegas stimulation, got them on some magnesium, some multivitamin and all that kind of stuff. The weird thing about the husband though is like he just started, but he has this weird thing wherever he gets hot, he breaks out in hives. Mm -hmm. So it's like if he takes a hot shower, he gets hives. If he gets stuck in the rain, he gets hives. I'm like, well, that's super weird. So he's a new patient. He's a new patient. So I don't know if it's changed much yet, but we'll see in a month or so. Yeah, I'm interested to see about that because, you know, it's interesting about hot showers. We have a good friend who's actually been on the show before, and she has Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And mm -hmm. so one, one of the comorbidities, if you want to call it that, of people who have Ehlers-Danlos sometimes is this when they get in hot showers they can faint they can pass out their venous return or arterial pressure just sort of drops on them and she has reported back that use of vagus nerve stimulation and parasympathetic activation helps her no longer have that problem and so i'm wondering in this case also if he's got this response to you know hot showers and other things whether or not that'll resolve as a result yeah i, I hope so we'll see i mean it's only been two weeks with it so Right. It's a little early. Yeah, we'll see. It's cool to hear about it. That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. You know, with all these patients whose heart rates are jumping so dramatically going from, a you know, sitting or lying down to standing up, it's almost like POTS. Uh, have you seen any patients either with POTS or patients who are hypertensive? You know, we talked a little bit about blood sugar, but have you seen any changes with hypertension? Uh, to be honest, no, I haven't measured it. I'm sure there is. I just haven't tried it. I didn't think about really it. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, the main reason why, the biggest reason why I got into like the vagal stimulation is because of like patients that with a high heart rate have the almost like POTS reaction. And those are the patients like what could never affect. And then what, this is the way to help them. So I did have a patient that has eating disorder where like after having COVID and her mom's tried a bunch of stuff. And then we did the laying down, standing up with the HRV and found out her heart rate changed by 40 points. I'm like, whoa. This is probably one of the reasons why I have so much anxiety. So we did one time her heart rate dropped down by 15 beats per minute, which is really cool. So what type of eating disorder did you have? Bulimia. So there's an interesting study out there. It's a very short, a small pilot study in bulimia or a case report even, I think, or several cases, case series of patients who had, it was an implanted vagus nerve stimulator in that study. And what they found was that within you know, 30 days or so, the the number of, you know, vomiting events dropped from, as I said, an average of like 35 or 40 a week down to two, you know, so wow. it was a tremendous That's change insane. in that. So I'd be interested to see in this patient, is it, you know, not just the heart rate changes. And you say, interesting that you say that it's almost like a post COVID response. This person yeah. is, and when you talk to this patient, does she speak? tell you why she's feeling compelled to do this or no well it's kind of interesting because you have to kind of dance around a little bit because mom tells me but daughter doesn't want to say anything so so i just hear it mostly from mom and we did the one stim and then they went on vacation for a month so i haven't seen her since then but as she said they're gonna get advice when they get back so okay will be, be really interesting i will mention and i've had this with a couple other patients that when there is an eating disorder in particular bulimia because what it's doing is it's having the gi tract essentially go the opposite direction right motility is meant to go unidirectionally the vagus nerve is heavily involved in that motility function within the gastric kind of tube and when we actively force the directionality of the the food to go in the opposite way, we're directly affecting the vagus nerve in its ability to create optimal function. So stimming would be a very great way to do this. I've had that positive effect with patients of my own that had a history of eating disorders, specifically bulimia. Yeah. We've talked about this, I think once before about a patient, it was a neurologist who treats headaches, but has a 
sort of a specialty within his practice dealing with patients who have cyclic vomiting syndrome. And mm -hmm. he was able to use that. And that's certainly a situation where that's not voluntary, what we call voluntary with you know bulimia. But I think people who have it would argue that they, it's not really voluntary. They're doing right. it almost like a nervous response. It isn't a nervous disorder. And so, but in cyclic vomiting syndrome also saw the same benefits, this reduction and even complete elimination of, you know, this daily vomiting or even hourly vomiting problem that these people right. have. So it was a really, really gratifying experience, especially for that physician, because I think I, I mentioned his daughter had actually died of cyclic vomiting syndrome. And so see something that could have that benefit was something he had sort of dedicated his career to finding and seeing it work was really, you know, very, probably bittersweet for him, I'm sure. But, you know, I'm excited to, to and nobody, I don't think has even looked at this, but I have teenage daughters. And so among the various things that I hear about among their friends is this cutting phenomenon where especially girls are using razor blades to cut their skin. And apparently, according to the literature, because I was sort of horrified by it, but I was also at the same time sort of intrigued because it sounded like almost like a nervous disorder, like bulimia. I was wondering whether or not, you know, what the prevalence of this is. And I was horrified to find out that something on the order of 25% of teenage girls have spent some time like cutting themselves. It's yeah. up tremendously compared to where it was, you know, 15, 20 years ago, where it was not even heard of, I don't, I don't think. And so I'm wondering, you know, it, I'm not suggesting you have experience, but if anybody who's listening to this has experience with patients who have, you know, have this problem and whether or not there might be an application for this, and I'm totally blue skying here, I'm not suggesting that we know that it would, but I just wonder whether or not it might reduce that urge to, to of self-harm. Okay. Yeah, scary. I'm sure you don't have any experience with that. No, but I do see, like, you know, I do see tracks on, on the wrist a lot. I'll see them, like, in his thigh for sure, sometimes on the chest too. It's way more common than you would think. Yeah, that's that's uh, kind of terrifying, having daughters yes. myself. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, well, listen, if you do encounter a case of that, we would really love to hear about it. Sure. It sounds like something that could actually be written up in a journal. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah might, might want to consider doing a little case study on that if, if it really does have the benefits. Sure. I'm, yeah. I'm sort of hopeful that it might. Yeah, that'd be cool. So have you guys had many, have you seen any case studies of like ADD or, you know, help with anything with like autism or anything like that? So it's a topic that we've hit on many times on the podcast. And we actually had a researcher by the name of Marie Eve Tremblay, who is one of the world's experts on microglial cells and specializes in animal models of autism and schizophrenia. And it turns out that inflammation experienced by the mother during pregnancy, so they call it actually maternal immune activation, can have a profound effect on the offspring's neurodevelopment. And so it's been estimated that something like 30% of all schizophrenia is the result of maternal immune activation events. So severe inflammatory challenges, whether trauma or infection or otherwise, that disrupt the microglial cell development in the fetus. And as a result, years later, decades later, the structural problems that resulted from that evidence themselves in schizophrenia. The same thing is true of autism. It's actually, they're very similar, but they're sort of opposing in what they do in the brain. Schizophrenia is an over pruning of the network. So tearing down of the network, there's lots of things in schizophrenia that actually mirror what happens later in life in, in Alzheimer's. Autism is the opposite. There's sort of a failure to prune the network properly. So you sort of have this overgrown network that where there's too many connections. That's why it's similar to OCD-like behavior because there's so much incoming that they can't process. Both of them have cognitive issues. And so the, the work that we're doing with Marie Eve Tremblay is studying whether vagus nerve stimulation can shield the offspring from the consequences of that immune activation. There's reasons to believe that it should work based on work that was done in animal models of migraine and other things, but we're waiting to see what the results will be. And I think it'll be groundbreaking. 
It'll also be really interesting to kind of note with things like the Air Force study, for example, Mm -hmm. the improvements in focus, the improvements in cognitive function involved in patients that do stim on their own, that they are able to pay more attention and stay more focused, even when they are in a sleep deprived state. So very parallel area where improvement can occur on a particular case basis. But I think JP, you're alluding to more of the maternal aspect where the Air Force study and the cognitive improvements is is focused on a very symptomatic function at the time where yeah. risk can be utilized. And there's papers that have been published on the use of implanted vagus nerve stimulators in patients with epilepsy, because that's where the first indication for vagus nerve stimulation came about, using them in patients with epilepsy who also have autism. And what they've seen is that the vagus nerve stimulators don't only affect the epilepsy, they also provide positive benefits cognitively and behaviorally with respect to the autism symptoms. So I do think that there's, you know, there's certainly not evidence that would support, you know, an approval for treating autism, but in terms of what's out there in the literature, it does appear as if there might be some grounds for doing those studies, maybe ultimately proving that it does have those benefits. Certainly we know things like ketogenic diets, which are anti-inflammatory, seem to have benefits for patients with autism. So I would think that there's a possibility that vagus nerve stimulation, which has a similar effect on inflammation, might be beneficial as well. Okay. What about, is there any studies there on ADD, ADHD, that kind of stuff? Do you know? The answer is yes, but it's along the same lines of these anecdotal reports of cases where vagus nerve stimulation was used for another indication in a patient who also had ADHD. ADHD is similar to autism in that Mm -hmm. there's sort of a failure to prune the network as quickly as it should. In autism, the network never gets pruned properly, whereas in ADHD, it's just a delay. So, you know, At least that's the way it's described in the literature. So Mm. I think anything that you can do to restore the microglial cells back to their anti-inflammatory homeostatic housekeeping task is a positive. And that's, of course, that's the goal of vagus nerve stimulation is to downregulate that inflammation, restore homeostatic balance. So it's a product that's worth trying. Yes. You know, I think it'd be interesting to see it. If you have some good results with it, it'd be great to you know, great to see it in the literature. Sure. Absolutely. Dr. Kennedy, this has been an awesome chat. We've gotten some wonderful case studies and wonderful results with vagus nerve stimulation that you've had with your patients. And thank you so much for sharing those with us. It's been a really wonderful conversation to hear about your experiences on the ground, literally experiencing what vagus nerve stimulation does have to offer for your patients. And so I'm really happy to hear that so many of them are improving with this wonderful therapy. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been an absolute honor. And thank you again for joining us. JP, any final words? No, I think your enthusiasm and your excitement about trying this and your pioneering spirit is uh, is a testament to what a great practitioner you are and look forward to hearing more stories from your hands and your practice. I think there's there's great great potential for your patients there. Perfect. Thanks. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Kennedy. And for those who are listening, have a wonderful day and we'll catch you on the next one.